Hey guys, Brian Gothier here. I um, just want to show you a video clip using some topical colorants and also we put together some kits. Um, I know there's a few of you out there that don't really want to invest in doing the whole package to have your own products made up or to have products toll blended by companies or private labeled. So we've got some kits for a lot of you. You can just order a kit that will take care of your whole kitchen countertops. Um, we've got the polymer concentrate, we've got the, the bond coat, the marble coat, the two part, thick two part epoxies. Also we've got all the topical colorants that you can buy from us. Um, they're concentrate, we're one, usually one part paint, four parts water. Um, something here I'm just using the polymer and I'm actually rolling it over the MDF as a primer. Um, little extra durability things, you can put staples along the seam lines, not necessary but I definitely like to over exaggerate things to make it more durable long term. And then once your primer dries, the, the first part you're going to open up your little two gallon bucket of bond coat and you're going to mix it with full strength polymer concentrate. It's not going to be as easy to trial around as your marble coat, but this one, the main thing is you just want it, it's going to be a really, really sticky mix and you just want it to penetrate, get it as flat as you can. Um, don't worry about over troweling it. If you have a few little fuzzy parts sticking up or a few little slight rainbow marks from the troweling, just let it cure out and you can always come back with a concrete stone and lightly sand it. And here you can just pour out a small amount of material um, just try it right down the edge just like you see there I'd let it uh, drip down the edge and I'm normally on the, the edges I'll actually let it drip down a little bit and then uh, put your trowel down on edge and almost like a, a saw motion go back and forth and I've got some bigger ag aggregates into the in the bond coat which make it almost act like a gauge rake so it keeps you at a minimum thickness and just spread it out and then you can as you get the material around you can slowly come back and fine tune it or shape it again you don't have to get it perfect perfect because you can always let it harden up and lightly sand it and then one thing to keep in mind I mean the, the flatter you get it on this part the faster and easier it is going to be to apply the the marble coat but if you let the the bond coat dry too much it's going to start it's going to get real tacky and it'll start pulling the material around. Showing some small little sample boards, which it's a good idea. I mean, before you go doing this on whole process on your kitchen, is it's it's worth taking the extra time and use a small amount of material. Make yourself some little mock-up boards or some sample boards, and test out a variety of colors. That way, you know exactly what you're gonna with the best pattern, with the best coloration, and find out what works best for you, and then go ahead and do the same pattern in your kitchen, or wherever you're going to do this. Okay, then once your bond coat cures out, uh, the marble coat, this is going to be like troweling butter around. It's just a very user-friendly mix. Um, main thing here, you don't want to over trowel it, and there's no need to over trowel it. I'll normally trowel it on, get it fairly flat, um, then let it stiffen up and usually about 20-30 minutes later you can come back with a, a little water bottle and lightly mist it and then usually put a decent amount of pressure on it and trowel it about two to three times different directions and that should be, be plenty. And then same thing as your bond coat, just let the material go down the side and, and spread it out overall then come back and fine tune it. There's a little spot, right? But this is a very easy mix yep. for countertops, for flooring. And very, very durable. And keep in mind our edges, there's definitely a lot of different techniques that we teach for different edge options. Right here you can see that I've let it stiffen up, the material dried out. Now I'm doing a nice little polish technique, but 
at this point it gets the material very very slick very tight and the goal here is just want to trowel it do not overwork it in the most part usually two to three passes in one area and you should be able to get off of it and it's nice if you can get it flat that's great but keep in mind if you're going to use two thick two part epoxies which we sell um, it's going to be very forgiving in the sense that the epoxies are going to level everything out in a lot of cases I actually create deep little dimples and textures and veins on purpose just to create another illusion and then generally this part in most cases you would let it set most of the day or just come back the next day um, start sanding your edges which the effect that we created here we're just lightly sanding the edging here we're just showing you different we left out a lot of the techniques but we're showing you just different things that we're doing with that gray concrete look two part epoxies we sell it as a 64 ounce kit I think we had about 10 square feet 12 10 to 12 square feet so figure uh, 32 ounce kit 16 ounces of A 16 ounces of B we'll get to about get about 10 to 12 square feet and that's doing a nice thick coat and the key on any of this is just plan on wasting material in order to get a nice good clean job is plan on wasting material because you want to have enough material on top that it's going to self level and come out nice and flat little tricks there a heat gun is stay with it, keep an eye on small little air bubbles if anything comes up is use the heat gun and it will give you a nice perfectly smooth surface and then keep in mind there's definitely a lot of finishes and colorations that you can do but for the, a lot of you um, a good head start would be to go to find yourself some real samples of marble or granite use that as a cheat sheet and then copy that for your basic coloring um, keep in mind though as something that I do is I'll actually copy those and then add a lot of these lively colors that you normally wouldn't get or find in the real marbles or granites and then those that want to do uh, more than just your own project is keep in mind we have training that has it's unlimited training it's basically a membership where we update you on all the videos even our existing packages now you get all the main courses and then there's we have at least nine new videos right now that are updates and then we keep updating you But I uh, just wanted to show you guys some techniques. These kits are available. Um, and then also you can take the training programs and we'll basically give you all the formulas that we, we sell. And you can actually have it toll blended or buy it directly from raw material manufacturers. But going this route is definitely worth it. You're going to get a lot higher, higher durability. And then you'll definitely save at least 75%. And the great thing is that you can over exaggerate your product strengths. But Hope this was helpful, hopefully it stimulated your thinking and appreciate you taking the time to watch it. Thanks and take care.